I'm Sean Kelly from uh, Today on Top of the Stone, aka it's Recipe, and uh, this is my bio. Guys, a chance to introduce themselves to y'all. Hey, that right there, that's the, uh, the uh, Today on Top of the Stone uh, pup. Nah. Shot, What's up? I'm Cedric. I'm Money. And we're in Davenport. At my crib, on Farnham, east side. I'm gonna get my hair cut. <laughs> you need it. <laughs> man, I've been running wild, man. But nah, we're just sitting here talking about some real stuff, you know what I mean? About how if we knew what we know now, back in the day, I mean, you know, man, how we probably would have incorporated that. You know, life probably would have been a little bit different. We all done been through some. But yeah, we just sitting here kicking the bubble. Hey, I don't mind for y'all. Information is key. You gotta have the information. You know, you can, you can have ideas all day long. Right. You got ideas all day long, but if you don't have the, the know-how, the wherewithal, you know what I'm saying? Right. And it then it don't do you no good. And then, you know what, I'm, 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 I'm gonna say it like this. Like back in the day, the, the, the information was there, you know what I'm saying? But it wasn't put in our face like it is nowadays for us to go grab it. And at the same time, though, we wasn't we trying to get it, though. Yeah, we weren't yeah, trying, right. we trying to get it, though. We weren't trying to get it. We weren't trying to get it. You right. We were getting by. I wasn't, I wasn't hearing nobody. We was what I'm going to talk, about, talk about some stuff that I don't foresee myself having for. So, uh, you know, since me talking about doing nothing, nothing, and I think that as soon as I get a business, they're going to come and get me. And this is how I started the business. So what the hell? I'm going to get this money. I'm keeping my money. First of all, I'm keeping the money. That's the main thing I always did. Keep right. the money first, man. Mm -hmm. All the extra shit, I ain't give a fuck about nobody. Whatever you had, that's yours. Whatever you're doing, that was yours. And that's how far the conversation goes. Hey, um, I know how it was back in the day. Uh -huh. But still, though, at the same time, nowadays it's pushed in our face. You know what I mean? Either either you gonna grab it, or you gonna just let it slide by. Like me, I mean, y'all know the life I live. I mean, for me to be sitting here the way I am now, this a totally different. Come on, fam, this a totally different. For person. all of us, though, we all come yeah. in and walk. You know what I'm saying? And for us to all to be the transition yeah. out of the streets into into these legal things, you know, these legal avenues. You know what I'm saying? It's foreign, right? It's foreign because I'm not used to having to file taxes. What's good with it? Sean Kelly today on top of the stove, AKA the recipe. I'm up here today in Davenport, Iowa, putting together a salmon recipe I went and found for my sister-in-law and my brother. Yeah, I'll put her name first. My sister-in-law and my brother. So I'm just in here right now, I'm chefing it up. I'm about to make this creamy garlic honey sauce. Well, yeah, that's what it's called. Creamy garlic honey, so honey sauce. And, uh, we're gonna put it over here on the salmon. I'm gonna explain something to y'all about a salmon. A lot of us, you know what I'm saying, coming from, you know, like the majority of the people I'm targeting. Where we come from, we think fish. Okay, I want some fish, I want some fish. All right, the first thing we do, we get the fisher pole. Some of y'all go buy worms. You know, of course, me, I'm a professional. I don't buy a lot of bait. Only fish with twisted tails, metal jigs. Uh, y'all don't worry about that. But anyway, I don't want to give them the secrets. But anyway, the first thing we think about, catfish, bluegill, crappie, you know what I mean? Don't nobody never think shark, uh, what else, swordfish, uh, what you can really get your hands on out at Walmart or either high V, Sam. Don't never think about that. But Paula brought me into this, you know what I'm saying? When I started really fishing and stuff, bringing fish home, she introduced me to salmon. I had never had it before. Well. I'll, I'll retract that. I had it one time in a restaurant, but I didn't like it. And that's what I'm gonna, once, once I take this out, this package, that's what I'm gonna tell y'all about. It's a certain way that I feel you should prepare this piece of meat, just like any meat you, you, uh, you cook. Chicken, you cut the fat off of. Steak, well, you don't do nothing to steak because you want the fat on there. But pork, 
you know, hey, you gonna make your cuts. But it's filleted. And that's what most people want because they don't want no bone. And then this fish anyway is a fish you do, you fillet the meat off of. But it's one other thing you should do to this meat. And I'm gonna show you when I get back to you. Right now, I'm preparing the sauce for it. Right now, I only got two ingredients in a bowl. And I got a lot of more stuff to do. Paula, she got some things to do. So I'm gonna get back to y'all though. Just give me a minute. Alright, but I wanna tell y'all something funny though. This is just to, to lighten my, my mood real quick, cause I'm, I'm kinda nervous, you know what I'm saying? Even though I do do this for y'all, I ain't gonna draw it out. But look, I was in such a rush, I forgot, I forgot my shoes. So I'm up in here, I'm dressed. So I got some slip on, but I promise I don't remember the next time I go to somebody's house. So look, like I said, when I left off from y'all, we was gonna prepare the salmon a little bit different from when you would go to a restaurant. Cause some people like this. That skin, some people like that. But then you got some people like me that don't like it. So what I actually do is, what I actually do is, I fillet that off. And then up under there, there's red meat that I'm gonna cut out. Book, you got a fillet knife? Hello? Huh? This one? I saw mine up earlier. No, there ain't no fillet. All right. This one. <clears throat> These got them serrated blades on them. You ain't got nothing without them serrated blades? Mm. Well, anyway, I'm going to make it work, so we're going to go and cut this up. I mean, y'all know how to cut open the package, take your knife, you know, let the liquid leak down in the sink. I don't want to make no mess, because if I make a mess up in here, my sister's not going to put me out, for real. So, I'm going to take that out of there. All right, look, I'm going to set this in there. This is what I'm going to do. We're going to sit that out there. And I guess I'm going to have to work with what I got. Because I forgot my fillet knife like I forgot my shoes. So, let's see. I'd rather use this. Now, y'all ain't going to, because I'm right-handed, I got to cut from this way. So, you ain't, I can't cut like this. Wait a minute, hold on, hold on. Yes, I can, yes, I can. I got you. No, I don't. Hold on. Yeah, this sounded kind of big, and my brother board kind of small. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to start filleting this in, and as I get it filleted through, I'm going to pull this end up on the board, so I got it <clears throat> even. So, and when you do this, this is just like fishing, too. My crappie and my bluegill, I cut this off. I don't scale them, I don't gut them. I cut this fillet off the side, going down the side of that fish filleting. And then I cut the skin off just like this. So I'm preparing this just like I'm preparing some crappie or some bluegill for myself. All right. So like I say, you're gonna put your thumb down on the end and you're gonna, you're gonna kind of stay close to the skin. And it's very important that, like I told you, you don't want to use this kind of knife. Especially if you ain't used to cutting meat, making cuts and stuff. Because what you'll do is you'll saw it and you'll lose a lot of your meat. But, you know, as y'all know, I've been doing this for, what, about three years now. I started off over on... Uh, B Avenue down to see the Rapids, a house me and Paul was living in. Now, I started off just barbecuing. That's what I started off doing. I started off barbecuing, videotaping myself. And I don't know, people just started coming and 
asking me to keep going, so I kept going. Now, this is what you don't want. This right here. Now, some people like it because they can get it crispy. I've never been successful on getting this crispy to make it taste good. So, to me, this holds a lot of fat. You see that up under there? That's fat. And then the skin holds a lot of oil. So when you when you bite in it, you know what I'm saying? You tasting the fat, you tasting the oil. To me, it's just it don't taste good. It's not appealing to me. So I don't like the skin. I take that off. Then after that, if you can see, it's a red line going down here. We're going to cut that out too. We're going to cut it at an angle on both sides because we want to pull that out of there. That's, that's a bloodline. I don't, I don't eat that. It, it don't taste good. So once again, I'm right-handed, so I got to cut this way. But I'm starting in the middle of the fish, and I'm just going to cut back. I'm going to cut that out. I mean, you're not losing a lot of meat. Like my homeboys, they like the catfish. They like to, uh, they don't, they like to just pull the skin off, pull the guts out and eat that catfish that way. I fillet my catfish and this the same way I prepare that fillet on that catfish, just like this, because I'm gonna cut all that nastiness out of it. A lot of people don't know when you when you bite that, especially catfish nuggets from Walmart. I used to like them, but then it was just that taste. I couldn't deal with that taste. Now, if you can see, I can I can run my fingers up under there, but I'm not all the way through the fish. So I'm gonna turn them this way, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna cut, make my cut. But I'm gonna stick my finger in there so I know just about where to go. So, cause sometimes when you got a smaller fillet and you cutting like this, it tend to break in half. I don't want that. So, I came up with sticking my finger down in there so I could feel the knife on the other side. Cause I just want to cut the middle out. I want the fillet to stay whole. I actually won't turn this. Okay. I'm gonna show you this. I, 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 I almost got it cut out. And you may have to go to the other side. But just take your time, don't rush it. What's up, nephew? I have my nephew, he's sitting on the stairs watching his uncle go to work. I mean if I'm if I don't make it from this, I got enough sports players in my family where, <laughs> shit, I'm gonna get some money. <laughs> <laughs> shit. Oh, my fault, my fault. I'm sorry about the language, parents. I know some of y'all got y'all kids watching. I'm trying to clean that up, too. Now, you see how, you see, I'm shadowing it. You see how dark that meat is? Some people call it a mud vein. Some people call it a vein. I call it a mud vein because it, it sounds cooler myself. So, but yeah, I cut that out because I don't know, when you cook it, that blood tend to go through the meat. And you tasting all that nastiness, so I take that out. Unless you like that taste, you know what I'm saying? That's on you. But then, you know, like when you done filleted that skin off, you may see a few spots that look a little silver. You can take your knife and you know just cut the little pieces off. Just take the tip and go up under. All right, so he prepared. I'm gonna rinse him off and I'm gonna get him to this pan. And I'm going to get back to y'all. Now, I 
got my uh, creamy honey garlic marinade sauce made up. And this sauce is garlic, honey, uh, Dijon mustard, um, paprika, red pepper flakes, um, honey, and a little salt. And I squeezed a lemon in there. All right, so I'm going to baste it. Baste my salmon with this marinade. But also, I'm not going to... I'm not going to uh, put all my marinade on there because I feel like it's two things I got to do. First, I got to bake this salmon. Then I got to broil it. So while I'm baking them, you know, it's baking on. But the thing is... I feel like you may lose a little flavor because you got to tint it. When you cover it, you're going to tint it so that moisture is going to collect on the top of, of the, the tent and it's going to drip down on your salmon. So when you uncover it and go to broil it, what I do then is add the rest of my marinade. I'm not going to put it all on there at once. I'm going to put a generous amount on Alright, but look here though. Today is I don't want to say my first official, but today is my first taping of I guess the first official episode of Today on Top of the Stove. I'm in Davenport, Iowa. I'm here with my brother Booker and my sister-in-law Heather Jacobs. Chose to cook for them for the first time, comfortable comfortable ability reasons you know hey it's kind of different when you're cooking in somebody's home and cooking in my house with my little cell phone so i'm just gonna ask them probably a few questions you know see what they felt like when i first called them and how they felt when i first started doing this so i guess i'm gonna start with book and when you first heard that i was doing a show on facebook what you think about it? <laughs> <laughs> well you know <laughs> You know, as crazy as you is, you always got some weird ideas. So, but, uh, you know, in the end, everybody like us, you know, we all deal with food anyway. So, yeah, yeah. In the end, you always draw back to what you know. Right, you're right, because you're dealing food too, don't you? Yes, sir. You know, I own BJ's Big Dogs. Y'all hear that? BJ's Big Dogs. Go ahead, tell them, tell them a little bit about your stand. What you serving them? Oh, you know, uh, we do a little hot dogs, polishes, and brats. You know, just a little cheap stuff out there, like some ballpark stuff, but just outside the ballpark. So, location. Hmm? location. Where your location at? Uh, currently now, the location is anywhere I pull up. <laughs> <laughs> but he is on Facebook, and you can find him up under BJ's Big Dogs, correct? Correct. All right. And I mean, look here, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to be honest with you. Come in here, like, they done ate stuff. You know, the, the thing about my show is being able to, you know, switch what we've been eating all our lives and, you know, eat something different, try something different. So when I came here, I had to, like, really come with something. Couldn't come here and just fry no chicken. You know what I mean? <laughs> So, I mean, because they done ate a lot of stuff. They done traveled around this world. They done been to different places, Puerto Rico, Jamaican, just to name a few, you know, and God bless Puerto Rican, you know, what they're going through nowadays, you know. So, but, Heather, what you, how you feel when I first called you, what, two weeks ago, I asked you, could I cook for y'all? 
I mean, it was no question, 100%. I'm going to support you hands down in anything that we do. Love We're family. Sister, you know what I mean? We've come a long way from where we are. And so anything positive to bring us to the next level, I'm there to support you. Exactly. You know? And I mean, that's sort of like why I came home. You know, hey, I grew up in Montgomery, Alabama. I came here when I was 17 years old. You know, and this is just as much home as Montgomery is home. You know, I have a great support base here. So that's why I chose to come do my first show in Davenport, Iowa, because this is where my sisters and brothers at. I got some good people, some good sisters and brothers down there in Cedar Rapids too. But this is like where my, you know, these are my roots. These are my people. You know what I'm saying? So of course I'm coming. You know, they done been through everything. They see what I'm trying to do now. And I appreciate y'all. Like I told them, I said, I appreciate them allowing me to come into their home. Because they could have said, no, no, nah, Shane. But did I think I was going to get a no? Never. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, hey, that's, it is what it is. You know, and. Yeah. All right, look here, we done. I done played it full. We got Booker. We got Amari. I'm a lovely sister along Heather. Bro, <laughs> if you haven't, if you just now coming into the show tonight, this is what I prepared for them. I prepared a creamy honey garlic sauce that I baked onto a fillet piece of, a fillet, a salmon fillet. Book letting y'all see his plate. Served with a salad of kale, almond slivers, right? Did I say that right? Yeah. Almond slivers, kale, spinach, spinach kale. Parmesan cheese, a little lemon juice, a little olive oil. I mean, I know a lot of people used to the garden salad, but like I say, we trying something different. And I know some people do buy that, you know, bag of spinach, kale, but you know, hey. So this is what I came with tonight, and I gave them a nice Hawaiian roll. Because we all love the rolls. <laughs> a glass of wine, white wine at that, and it's very tasty. And I'm gonna I'm let them eat. I'm gonna step out the way. Alright, look, as you can see, I mean, the plate speaks for itself. They empty. My sister-in-law, she already done put her plate up. You know, but I'm going I'm to let them give y'all a chance to explain what this meal is like. I mean, and you wanna, I'm going to let my nephew go first because he tried it. Go ahead. Uh, look at the camera. Uh, I, I like the fish, but it's not my type of fish. What was wrong with it? I don't know. Too soft. Too soft? You eat fish when your dad catch them and fry them? That's what we used to. Mm -hmm. What about the flavoring, though? Good. Good? What about that salad? Mm -hmm. Was that salad different for you? You yeah. used to eat the garlic salad. Maybe a, a, what's that one salad we like? Caesar salad. Caesar salad. Yeah, that's what's up. I appreciate you. Hey, this is my nephew, though. You know what I'm saying? Hey, he did that for Sean. He did that for Uncle Sean. You know, how you feel about it, Elton? It was delicious. The salmon was sweet, but not too sweet. It was cooked perfectly, flaked right when your fork touched it. The salad was great. It was nice and light, so it was a nice accompaniment to the salmon. So I liked it. Thank you. Two thumbs up. What you think, boss? I get a grade A. <laughs> <laughs> Russ ain't get a grade A. The marinade that was uh baked on top or broiled on top or however you want to put it was uh 
nice with the garlic and the, the honey. You gave it a nice, sweet, good, bitter taste. The salad, uh, it was nice and light, you know, with the garlic and uh, the little cheese and there's some island tasting shit. That's what it was. You hear what he said? It was island tasting. That's different, y'all. I mean, come on, we eat the same stuff every day. The meal is boring. Fried chicken, box macaroni, and corn is what I see on Facebook. Come on, man, we gotta get back to our roots. Our people went out there and they picked fresh greens. Those are fresh greens. I know a lot of y'all, when I say fresh greens, you think collard greens, mustard greens, turnip greens. Those are also fresh greens. And I'm going to tell you something. A lot of people don't know about me. Now, I'm going to explain this plate to you. I'm borderline diabetic, so I had to change my diet up. A lot of, now, this meal, now, this is what Paula said to me. She said, Sean, I forgot the rice, which that salmon would have went nice with some white rice, the salad, and the roll. But I'm going to explain this to you. With the fish, you had a meat. With the salad, that's a vegetable. The roll, that's a starch. That gives you a complete meal. You don't always got to, you know, cook macaroni, uh, rice. Then you got your vegetables. Then you got your meat. Then you got a salad. Sometimes you take time to think. Like that meal was, that was three food food groups. Meat, vegetable, starch. And I also gave them a nice glass of white wine that'll come with every meal I cook. You know, and like I say, for me, a game changer, I had to start eating healthy. Because I don't want diabetes. And throughout the black culture, diabetes run through us. Not saying no, the races don't get it. I'm not leaving y'all out, y'all involved too, but we we suffer with that. So one thing also about my meals, I try to fix healthy meals. I'm trying to get you to try something healthy also along with a different taste. And I mean, hey, that's us today on top of the stove. My fault. That's us today on top of the stove. I'm the recipe. I'd like to thank my crew, my manager, you know what I'm saying? It's my manager, my wife, Paula Kelly. I call her the keeper. Hey, this is my guy right here that gave me my chance. Come here, come here, let him see you. Come on, come on, come on. Hey, he believed in me. He believed in me. This is my man, this is How y'all doing? 80s, crazy 80s productions, you know what I'm saying? Hey, this is my man. He, he the one gave me a chance. Come here, Kim. Come here. And my partner. Hey, this 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 his old, this, I want to say old lady, this his woman. <laughs> hey, I'm going to give her a title yeah, too. Broly. Hey, let me step out the way. Hey, she my wheel man. You know what I'm saying? And she got L's. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but look. We're going to let y'all go, you know what I'm saying? Let me step back a little bit. We're going to let y'all go. We're going to sit around. I'm going to kick the bubble for a few minutes, and we're going to hit the highway. It's getting pretty late, you know what I'm saying? I got family to get to. They probably got things they got to attend to. And I'd like to thank y'all tonight for tuning in to Today on Top of the Stove, a.k.a. on the recipe. And I want to say one more thing. Joey, I know you watching me. Hey, I, I know you proud of Uncle Sean. And I'm doing this for me and you. Your legacy will always live on with me, through me. R.I.P. to my nephew. I love you, Joy. I know y'all hear me. Nah, they don't hear you. I know y'all hear me. Nah, but alright. I'ma make you hear me. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, I've been through some things. Will I ever
I'm just trying to make it out. Mama pocket was a drought. Pops running in and out. All this time I've been smart. I just had to figure it out. What was Desi all about? And I let a couple people down. Trying to make my family proud. Give me something to smile about. But listen, I never changed. I just switched lanes. Two different things. We not the same. I got a different aim. From the same tracks. But I call it a different train. Yes. I call it a different train. Yeah, I've been through some things, but it made me change my ways. That's why every night I pray just to see another day. Cause Lord knows where I'm from. Ain't nobody really safe. Taking devils out on days. Niggas get a shot in their face. Yeah, I've been through some pain. Yeah, I've been through some pain. I got older than my mind got smart. But my heart got colder I sprouted it like a flower Y'all ain't see this coming Like us from power Many times I wanna give up But some standards gotta live up People saying that they love me But highly doubt they show up You don't even understand Some nights I wanna pour I'm trying to live left Stepping on niggas neck Ain't no more laughing Everybody on your feet I deserve a love clapping I'm a ball forever Man, Kobe, what happened? Trust none, fear one Pass me a pen You can keep that gun Y'all can have that drama, cause this is done. Yeah, I've been through some things, but.